Good morning, Mindy from Half Moon um, Home Decor and Design Studio here in Windham, Maine. I'm actually working on a piece alone today and I figured I would do a video, try my first video by myself. Um, I'm working on a china cabinet and as you can see it's a dark blue. It's actually chalk paint, Annie Sloan decorative paint, um, Napoleonic and Aubusson blue. So as you can see the lighter color up here, um, I'm sanding it. And so I thought, hmm, a lot of people don't understand what we do when we're sanding, but you can see how by sanding it, it changes color. I'm using a 600 sandpaper. I'll put you guys back down again. And I want to show you what it's supposed to look like when we are sanding. Pull it forward. So, if you follow me, we're always going to sand down the sides. We're never going to go across the grain because it will actually scar it and leave it behind. So I follow with four fingers. This is supposed to be a very non-stressful event. When you're applying just your fingertips, as you can see, we've applied just lines. When we're applying our, our palm and our hands, we get a more even sand. Can you see that color change going on there? That's what we want. Now the wax will bring it back to its natural intended color. You know, the beautiful deep richness. We're actually gonna be using black wax. But this is a good way and a perfect color to show everybody and my customers that it's okay to sand, that this is normal. And you've just gotta be a little bit patient and, and gentle. The key word in sanding especially if you don't want to be distressing, is to be very, very gentle. Sanding should take, should be rather quick also. You know, this is not a long process. It shouldn't add a lot of time, but what it does do is it adds a very soft, supple feel to the end result of your furniture. You don't want your furniture to feel like it was painted. This feels like it was manufactured. I'm just going to continue. Now I have sanded and uh, finished most of the rest of this piece um, of this small hutch. It's actually going to be super pretty um, when I'm done and I'm excited for it. So with that being said, I'm going to show you what the wax does. Just want to check my work. Waxing into the grooves is where I'll be leaving a lot of that dark wax behind. And as you can see, I missed them over here. See how nice that is? And when you feel it with your opposite hand, it is just like glass. You do get some residue. See that little bit of blue? Now some people say, should we take that off? And you certainly can. You know, you totally can wipe that back down with a cloth. We sell these rags here at Half Moon, and you see the debris that is left behind. It's not a lot, but you know, you'll know, you see it in your wax, especially when you were working with a clear wax. Today, we won't see it so much because we're working with a black soft wax mixed with Annie Sloan's clear soft wax. And to remember, you always have to mix black wax and clear wax with your black wax and brown wax with your clear wax to get the mobility for it to move around and glide. I'm working with one of Annie's small wax brushes. I swear by them. I don't wax without them at all. A smidge of dark black wax, not dark, excuse me, but black. I'm going to switch to this side and I hope that you guys can follow along. So waxing, I always say, people always feel that it's, they're not doing a correct job. Well, I feel sometimes people are very rough when they're waxing. They just need to be gentle. And by gentle, it means you're not trying to, you know, work your, work, do your daily workout while waxing. Keeping in mind that you can go in all different directions and get it into those nooks and crannies, especially when you're using Annie's brushes. That's what they're best for. You know, how can I get my hand in there? I really can't, but I can get Annie's brush in there and see how that works, how beautiful that is. Gets down this long crevice in here. We don't have to think about it. We let the brush do it. So do you see how it's changing this blue to this really super dark midnight blue? 
I just love what black wax does for pieces. Um, it was a game changer for me. Um, I really have, you know, loved to wax. When I'm waxing, I get excited. Most people are like, you love it? And I'm like, I absolutely do. Because it's making me feel like we're almost done. That the piece is coming to, the, to um, life the way that I envisioned it. Now see how I can put the wax on in all different directions? I'm going to show you something. I'm sure you guys have all seen that. That white stuff. This. Those are skips. And that's where you're not waxing completely. You're missing points. And if you slow down and concentrate and don't rush it and I you know you'll fill in those areas and by going in different directions in a gentle gentle fashion you will find that you're not damaging your wax brush you're not beating up your wax brush that you're just finding all those little places that you might have missed now I like to finish in a in the fashion that I want my wax to appear. So I don't want this finish. I want an up and down symmetrical with the wood grain. Um, and I end with that, but it doesn't mean you have to apply it all in that same direction. And I don't use a lot of wax. People tend to say, well, you know, I've gone through a, a lot of wax. Well, a lot of wax, when you're using a lot of wax, that indicates to me a lot of work because you have to massage this wax back and, you know, massage it in and remove the excess to get to that point where we can get a final buff and have a nice soft, supple finish. Wax, oopsies, sorry, I dropped my brush. If you're, I'm going to get some little debris off that. If you're, um, leaving your wax tacky, your wax will always be tacky. Wax will not cure if it is leaving fingerprints. So you need to remind yourself that if it's still leaving fingerprints, if it still feels draggy, it's always going to feel draggy. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take what I call a massaging rag. And I like to use small rags like this. And this is where we're going to get the excess wax um, off. And this is the opportunity where you take to push it around in case you've missed any corners. You can gently massage it in. I like to leave a little bit of wax up here. Can you see it? Because it gives it that dimensional look. We're also going to leave it in the corners over here. Alrighty. Okay. So see how much wax we're getting off our rag? That's normal, okay? So the biggest mistake people make is they try to work with one rag. And what happens is your rag, your fibers in your rag get full and it's unable to take any more wax off. And that's why people are like, I don't get a finish like you do. It's because you're trying, they're trying to do it with one rag. So this is just my massaging rag. Look at that. A lot, a lot of, um, you know, excess black wax coming off. So you see me finding a new area of rag. Key factor, totally key, nice and clean. Those fibers are empty. And as you see, oh my God, it just starts to glide. So, with that being said, people are concerned about a start and stop line. They're like, Mindy, do I have to wax the whole side? I don't. I like to wax in sections, um, and they're concerned that you'll have a start and a stop, and you won't. Don't be concerned about that. I like to do small sections because I feel I can keep control of it. It won't get away from me. The customer walks in. I can walk out of the studio. If I'm done for the day, I don't have a whole piece to buff. Remember that rag we were talking about? Now, this is a, a buffing rag, nice and clean not too big. I feel if we're working with too big of a rag, then we're wasting fibers. I like to make a pad in a sense so I can tuck my little fingernails in there. Worst case, <laughs> we're waxing and we drag our finger down our piece of furniture and scratch it. I'm sure we've all done it. Uh, gotta, you know, fix it. Now see, we're still getting residue. 
But this is my buffing rack. You wouldn't believe how it's just gliding now. You can start the shine. You can start to see the shine build. And if you want a matte finish, this is where you would not buff a lot. Me personally, I love, 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 love the shine on things. Um, so it's a personal choice. See if you can see that wax coming off there. Big mistake here, fiber's full. So what do we do? Clean section of rag, fold it back in, make my little buffing pad. Now this is gliding, this is gliding. I get down here, I'm dragging. But you can almost hear it. And I know you can see the shine building. Got a little bit of a skip right there, I see. I get a skip every day. I wax and paint every day, but I get a skip every day and people get so down on themselves. Oh, I, you know, I'm, I'm not getting it. It's, you know, I don't get that finish. Well, it doesn't happen in the first try. So what you do, I don't know if you can see that, you guys. I'm going to bring you closer. See that right there? To me, I don't like that. See that right there? Don't care for that one either. So simple little fix. Grab your wax brush, little bit of product. We're not talking a lot of product, very little product. And we're gonna just go over those areas of concern. Hopefully one application will take care of it. Now we'll have some areas of concern here and this is where I'll, when I wax the bottom of this, I'll overlap down there. So we'll fill in those areas. So let's check it out. I am gonna search for a new section of rag and kind of massage this in over here on those two concerned areas. And I can see I'm already liking it better. So look how much I took off. Cause I kind of turned my massaging, my, my buffing rag into a massaging rag. So here we go again, whoops. One more, and you will find that you will not be spinning your wheels if you do have an ample supply of rags. We do sell rags here at the shop, and they actually, you know, sell rather quickly. We make them up all the time, so, you know, they're here if you need them. Um, we like to have a one-stop shopping sandpaper, Annie's brushes, paint brushes, wax brushes, um, on hand at all times, including a full line of chalk paint in quartz and sample um, size colors. Don't you love that? For all those people that don't really understand the importance of wax, the importance of the wax is it completes your color, it gives you protection. So after 21 days, you can, um, you know, wipe it down with hot soapy water, you can dust it with pledge. Um, great for kitchen cabinets. This is a beautiful, inexpensive update for your kitchen cabinets. Imagine taking, you know, your existing cabinets and transforming them with chalk paint and her wax. So I'm going to see if that's good. See if we can do the fingerprint test. This is a test everybody should be doing when they are waxing with Annie Sloan, whether it's clear wax, brown wax, white wax, or black wax. Do the test. If you're, especially a table or cabinets, you have kids, who wants fingerprints? Absolutely nobody. So I like to do the test and lo and behold, guess what? I'm not done. Let's see if we can see those guys. Let's see if we can. Uh... So I can, oh, there it was. I can totally see my fingerprints. So guess what that means? That means I need to find a Clean section of my rag. Clean always will be your best. I can see one, two, three, four fingerprints right there. So all that means is that we just need to give it a, a gentle buff. Sometimes by letting it rust, rest about an hour will help with that fingerprint because it lets it settle in. But I will um, buff this piece until there is no fingerprints ever left behind. 
And as you can still see, I'm still pulling off a little residue. I mean, I'm leaving my black behind, but there is still a little bit of black wax that needs to be buffed in. What do you think? Oh my God, it feels just like glass. So I hope this video has helped, just a short video. Um, lots of times people have questions. You can reach out to me here at Half Moon Home Decor and Design Studio in Wyndham. I'm here just about every day. Give us a call, stop in, hope that we can supply you with all your needs for any Sloan chalk paint and any home decor items. Thank you, have a great day, bye-bye.